get started talking about price action. Now, one of the most ignored, but one of the most important adages in the online trading world or in any investment or trading world is price never lies. The only thing you can depend on and the only thing that you can make it an actual trade or an investment on is on price. And it's always on the last price or whatever price was. That's what it is. Okay. Indicators, oscillators, trading strategies, you know, scanners, robots, all, they don't lie, but they make mistakes. They are not the final word. The only final word out there is price. Now, price action is a favorite with short to medium term traders like ourselves. Price action trading brings together an interesting mix of information and different views and different information. Hold on, it seems to be your screen is stuck here. Oh, let's see if I can catch it up to you. There we go. Now, as many of the decisions associated with price action trading are subjective, what one investor may see as a breakout, another trader may see as a potential price reversal. Neither is lying, neither is mistaking, because the only thing that's gonna know where it's going is price. So compare and con contrast this with pure technical analysis where you effectively ignore the experience of investors in favor of cold hard dread. When you're trading technicals and you're trading when RSI goes over 80 and MACD crosses over, make this trade and you might use price to dictate your entry or exit point, but you've used all these technicals to make a decision. Now, human nature dictates that futures, commodity prices, currency prices are all volatile. Nobody can predict where they're going to be and when they're going to be there. Now, I trade and I live by this statement. Okay, now, I didn't write it, I didn't come up with it, but I've memorized it for years. I have no idea where I ever got it. But that is that price is always random. Nobody can predict where price is going to be. It's completely random. But there are certain times that price exhibits non-random behavior. When we have that non-random behavior, we can then make intelligent trading decisions. And that non-random behavior is price trends. Now, a lot of people will argue with me all the time, but I'll tell them that price spends most of its time moving sideways. It might, might be moving up a little and then go into yes and move down a little. Move up. It spends very little time actually trading in true trends. But when these trends develop, we can then make intelligent decisions. Now, the key to any successful price action trading strategy is to remove all the noise such as fundamental and look at the price patterns, trends, and other forms of technical analysis. When combined with good old fashioned experience and a feel for the market, this may create a potential successful investment strategy. Don't forget, even if you've opened a position based on any of the following price action trading strategies, you can also use technical data to set stop loss limits. Now, I try to explain price action trading. Like, when you get up in the morning, you know, your eyes are hardly open, you, you know, you roll over, kiss the wife, good morning, say hello, roll down the steps without opening your eyes, turn on the kitchen lights, push the button so the coffee gets started, go back up, turn on the, the water for the shower, jump in the shower, and finally your, your eyes are starting to open, you're waking up a little bit. But then you go back downstairs, you know where your coffee cup is, you pull it down, you fill it up with coffee, 
you know, hollered the wife, I'm leaving, get in the car in the garage, don't pay any, but any mind anything, and hit the garage door opener, hit the keys in the ignition, pull out, pull in the street. You've done that out of habit. You've done that out of years and years of doing things. Okay, now, you haven't made any decisions. You haven't observed anything. It's just pure habit. So that's why when the kids leave the bicycle behind the car outside the garage door and you roll it over, that's because something out of the ordinary happened. You know, if there's no coffee in the coffee machine, so when you push the button, you end up with a pot of hot water. But you haven't made any decisions. Now, once you pull out the driveway, now you've been working at the same office building for the last 10 years. You get in your car, and without thinking too hard, you start proceeding down your street, and you notice that the trash men are on the street that you normally turn on. You see the school bus on the other street, so you know you're going to go straight because if you turn down where the trash men are, you're going to sit there forever. If you go where the, the, the side street where the school bus is, you'll never get past it. So you, even the, so, your brain's telling you to take the longest route, which since morning, because of timing, will be the fastest route. Then you get to where you're going because those three streets converge somewhere down, far down, you know, not too far down. And then you get yourself on the highway. And on the highway, you know how to merge right on. You're not paying any attention, but you, you know, the cars are going by. It's not the same cars every day, but you know, your brain is, is telling you what to do and you're observing and taking it in. You get over in the left lane, you go so far, you pull over the right lane because you know that the cars move faster in the right lane. And then you know where to merge over to your exit. You pull in your parking lot at work. And you know, if I say to you, how did you get to work this morning? You'd have to think about it because you don't know how you got. It. Because you had a feel for the route. Okay, Your brain told you what to do. The brain made decisions based on lots of factors. In this case, we're also doing this in the market. Our brain should be making instant decisions based on a feel for the markets. And this is where price action is very, very important. And one of the biggest issues I have with online trading. Now, when I started trading, I traded in the pits in the commodities market. And back when we were, you know, using ticker tapes and hand charting and the markets moved slower and the most I ever traded was four or five agriculturals. That was it. Because that's you couldn't even get data in those days. But today, online brokers like OBR, who are great brokers, offer you a huge range of assets to trade. And I have students all the time jumping from Bitcoin. Oh, they were going crazy Monday on Bitcoin soaring up. I say, no, why? You don't trade cryptocurrency. You don't know what's going to happen. They jump from Bitcoin over to the dollar, over to gold, over to silver, over to, you know, now, now you know, the fav market favorites, NEO. You know, and then they'll jump down to Spotify. And I'll say, how do you do this? I mean, I've been in the market for 30 some years and I only trade today. The maximum is six assets and they're all currency pairs and they're all crosses with the euro or the dollar. Because you have to understand the feel of the market and the personality of the asset. Okay. You don't need to look at technical indicators, but even when you do, the fact is that when I teach you how to use stochastics or MACD, or I teach you how to use Bollinger Bands, I can only teach you general guidelines, a beginning point. Okay. Now, for instance, Maybe this particular asset spends much of its time in overbought and oversold regions like Bitcoin because it has huge volatile moves. Well, maybe if you understood the personality of this asset, you would know to change it from a 70, 30 range to an 80, 85, 90, and 25 range barriers because this is how that asset trades. It spends a lot of time being volatile. But this comes all about understanding 
price action and what price is trying to tell you. Now, one of the most important things that you can do with price is start some type of a system that will help you interpret what price is trying to tell you. And one of these systems, and one of the best is support and resistance. Because where do you put support and resistance on your chart? Right over top of price. It makes you work hand in hand with price. Now, I will take the word support and resistance and throw it in the trash. Not because there's nothing anything wrong with it. They're easy concepts to understand, but a lot of people, including myself, don't get confused in the terminology. It's resistance can flip to be support. So in other words, that resistance line, when you were climbing up the ladder, it was your third step up the ladder. But when you're climbing down the ladder, it's your second step down the ladder. Same level, same step. Okay. So I'm always calling something resistance. I don't flip it over and say, now it's support. This is my resistance level. Technically, it could be my support level because I understand where price is in relationship to that price line. Same thing with support. Okay. These are the levels around price. Now, a good trader who's trading from price action is constantly watching his charts. Let me flop, pop up some live charts here for us. And he, this good trader isn't drawing support and resistance lines on his chart today. His support and resistance have been driven, drawn on this, these charts for long, long times before. Because whenever the price traded in this price range, those lines were put on the chart and they're extended forward into the future. So when Bitcoin pops back up to this range, we have our resistance and our support levels from the last time Bitcoin was trading here. Drawing them on today, I mean, you can draw them on today. That doesn't hurt you. But the more historically that this line has been on your chart, the more times historically that price has reacted at this price level and formed an important price level at this price, the more important that level is into the future. If, you know, hypothetically, we are, you always hear people talking about, well, when gold breaks 1800, well, 1800 is an important psychological price level. It's also an important resistance or support level. When gold is over 18, say it's 1810, 1820, and starts falling back down, it will get supported by 1800. They can go right through it. These price levels are not firm stopping point. Just like when you're going down that ladder, going up, you might've jumped up, you know, in running up, you know, going up the, the steps, say the steps, quickly and taking two steps at a time. Coming down, and coming down, maybe you're talking to a coworker. You're still going down to the same first floor, but that third step is still the third step. The fifth step is still the fifth step. But there's no saying that you're gonna get down to that third step and you're not gonna stop for a minute and say, oh, you know what, I left my purse or I left my cell phone on my desk and run up those steps again. There's no reason when you're up on that, that second floor and you run into your, your friend Bob and he says, grab a cup of coffee with me. You say, fine, you run down the steps with him. Okay. Again, that's support and resistance. There is no rhyme or reason, except it gives you a good indication because most likely you're not gonna run from the second or the fifth step. When you hit the landing, you're gonna realize, you, I, or when you get to the steps or when the elevator door opens, you know, there is some rhyme or reason where these prices are going to react. Now, I'm gonna tell you a story about support and resistance and why it's crucially important because it's all about observing price. Now, 
I'm going to tell you a story about a high-rise office building. So remember I told you, price support and resistance is like an elevator. The resistance is the floor above your head because in order to move up, you have to break that floor above your head. What is supporting you? The floor below your feet. So when you're moving up, that elevator is going to push you up and up and up and up and up and up and up. Now, let's go over to the for easy thing. We're going to do, talk about a four-floor building. Now, this four-story building has a ground level, which is retail. Now, you are the trader. Completely new day, new asset, new everything. You walk in this building and you look around and you see all these retail shops. At the far end of the retail shops, and it's mostly like coffee shops and a cigarette shop, tobacco is, you know, a guy selling lottery tickets, you know, a guy selling donuts over there. Because it's just a one story, you know, it's a four story, one block office building. So you observe at the back of this two beautiful gold elevator doors. So you step over there and the elevator opens. Now you're on the ground level. Now you're a trader observing price action and that price action is the elevator. So you step in the elevator, but since you can't influence price, you got your hands in your pockets. So the elevator goes up to the first floor and the doors open and you look out the doors and you see this dark paneled wooden floors and beautiful dark carpet and lights down the aisle. You see a big desk at the front. And then you see all the names of these professional offices. There's law offices. There's a doctor's office. There's a, an accounting office. Okay. You don't see them, but you see the names on the side because you're just observing from the elevator. And you can see it's a beautiful dark wood paneled, you know, typical out of the movie set kind of office complex. The door closes again. And it goes up to the next floor and the doors open. Well, you notice there's some hallways, but there's not much up there. Because all those offices on the first floor have second floors and you have to go into the office to get to the second floor. Now there's a dark, you know, there's a hallway with a door because maybe employees need to get in and out, but it's not where you come in. It's not the main entrance to each one of those offices. Door closes again goes up to the third floor and opens. And you see there big sign that says conference room one, conference room two, conference room three, conference room four. Another sign that says law library. And you see a schedule on the wall for some conferences. <clears throat> and you see there's a conference at 11 o'clock and one at two o'clock. And you see the law library is available from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. because it's for the lawyers downstairs, not for the public. Okay. Door closes again opens up on the fourth floor and you see the fourth floor is mostly looks like storage area for all those offices downstairs. Door closed again, it goes up to the roof and it opens up on the roof and it's a beautiful social environment. It's where the employees go to smoke their cigarettes. It's where people will go who's there for a conference to go up and have a cup of coffee. There's vending machines, there's outdoor smoking areas, there's little seating areas, but there's no restaurant or anything up there. It's just where the smokers come or people wanting to relax, people waiting for something. Door closes again, it goes back to the elevator, down to the ground level. Well, yeah, this sounds like a boring story, doesn't it? But imagine this was how you were observing price. So here's the elevator, it goes is up on the top floor, comes down here, you know, stops on the second floor goes down to the first floor, goes down to the ground level, goes back up to the first floor. You're observing. You haven't had enough to make conclusions yet. But now you get, you know, you get off the elevator back on the ground level and you start to think. Okay. With my observation, I realize that, you know, 839, 930, 10. The elevator would be very busy going up from the ground level to the first floor because people are coming to work. Very few people are going to be going up to the second. You remember on the third floor where the conference rooms were, 
there wasn't a first conference till 11 o'clock. So sure, maybe some employee from the first floor, second floor is gonna have to run up there and set up the conference, but the elevator is not gonna stop there often. As the employees start to arrive and the building starts to wake up, the elevator should make more trips to the roof because there's smokers or people getting coffee or taking breaks. But those people going up to the roof for cigarettes and breaks are most likely coming from the first floor because there's nobody on the third floor or conference rooms to go up to the roof. So you started getting to know this asset and how it should move by observation, by looking at price action. Now, you farther go on and say to yourself, okay, 11 o'clock, we should see a lot of activity for this elevator going up to that third floor conference room because there's a conference at 11. You don't know how many people are coming. You don't know why, what it's for, but you know there should be activity up to the third floor. By now, also, there's lots of people who come to work. The offices are all open, so there's people in there. So that elevator should also be making a lot of trips up to that roof smoking lounge area. You also can observe when that elevator's up on the, the, the roof deck, it's most likely, especially in the morning, gonna come down to that first floor because there's probably people working on the first floor or who work on the second floor, but walk down the steps and leave out the main entrance and who take the elevator up to the roof. So they're finished their cigarettes or their coffee and they're coming back down to go back to work. Observation. Now, lunchtime, you can make some other predictions. After five o'clock, you can make some other predictions. All of this by understanding how price moves and understanding the personality of the asset. And this is why I'm saying to you is trading a lot of assets is very, very difficult because you don't get to know that personality. And knowing the personality of that asset and how price should be moving and how it should be respecting each of those support and resistance levels and how important they are can make a big difference in your trading decisions. Because ultimately, no matter what you do, no matter how many trading strategies you have, no matter how many indicators and oscillators you use, you have to make a decision. Is that elevator gonna go up or is that elevator gonna go down? Right. Now, knowing where those elevator floors are and what's important can also help you determine where to enter a trade. Now, if you were looking to go short on something and you saw that elevator hit the top, the roof deck, okay, and you knew that it should be most likely going down to that first floor, you could easily enter a trade. Now, when it's going to that first floor, you don't want to close out your trade at that first floor. Now, there's a good chance that elevators can come to the first floor, drop off the employees, and somebody else can get on there going back to the roof. But this, statistically, it's most likely to come back from the first floor to the ground level, then go up. Now, would it stop on the first floor, or would it go straight up to the roof to pick other people up? Ah, uh -huh, it depends on programming. So once we have an understanding of the personality, we have our support and resistance, and we understand how price might move, we have to come up with some type of way to interpret when price reaches these levels, what should we be expecting? And pin bars, inside bars, mother bars, baby bars, are a very good way to accurately predict and recognize what is happening and what should be happening. Now, even though we call these bars, because they do come from originally from bar charts, we trade them in, well, it shows you lost my screen again, so let's see if I can get it back for you. We're trading these primarily using candlestick charts. So what is a pin bar? How do we use it? Well, let's say price has moved up and gone up that elevator and it's now at that third floor conference room. The question is, is it gonna go up to the fourth floor roof deck or is it gonna go down to this, the first floor? 
there are certain clues that we could use to help us determine where it's going to go. And this is the language that we might be using, the interpretation we might be using to make trades. Now, inside bars and pin bars are very easy to define. They, like I said, they used to be defined with bar charts. Today we use candlesticks. Now, we're not talking about candlestick chart recognition, pattern recognition. We're not talking about bullish engulfing and bearish engulfing. We're not talking about head and shoulders. We're not talking about three white soldiers and three black crows. What we're talking about are specific type candles that appear next to each other that also appear at the support or resistance levels. So many price action traders are extremely vigilant. They're always on the lookout for what is known as the inside bar pattern. You can recognize these by the emergence of a secondary bar or a secondary candle within the body of the previous candle. So in other words, we have a candle form. Most of the time, it's a long bodied candle. We don't care how long it is. Okay. Then we get the formation of the next candle and the entire body of that next candle is within the body of the previous candle. So in other words, this entire candle with the wicks fit inside the body of this candle. In most cases, 95% of the time we use this interpretation when the newest candle is also the opposite color of the current candle. So, these are referred to cutely as the mother bar and baby bar. When this pattern develops itself and you're looking at your price and it happens to develop itself right on your support or resistance level. So in other words, this mother bar, baby bar formed at the elevator in that conference room. That's telling you, okay. Now, remember, you're not on the elevator. You're the observer on the first ground level watching the buttons go up and down because you're not on that elevator seeing, okay, there was 15 people on the elevator or 10 people on the elevator, and they all got off on the third floor, so the elevator's empty now. Because if you were on the elevator, you could say, ah, well, I landed up the third floor, but I pushed four. But since you're just an observer and you're on the ground floor observing just the numbers, you don't see that on the third floor, a whole bunch of people got up to go down and leave the building. So they're all pushing ground level. So then you know where the price is. But you don't know that you're the guy sitting on the ground level, just watching the buttons go up and down, you know, one, two, three, four, four, three, two, one. So you have to make the educated guess. And that guess is you can increase your odds of making the right guess by observing certain patterns. These patterns, which one of the more reliable ones, are pin bars, inside bars, mother bars, that form at the resistance or support level. Okay. Now in this case, because it's underneath, it's the resistance level. But let's just say these are the bars or the candles that appear at a strategic price level. So we've got, we've used our common sense and interpretation and our observation. We now need to apply some other pieces of information to make an intelligent decision. It's only when you take the time to understand how bar patterns emerge and what they indicate that you can position your trades. Don't forget to also keep an eye on your stop loss limits. So as you'll gather from the information, price action trading is based around trends and momentum. Trends, the elevators are moving up or moving down, the speed in which it's moving, because we can also see that it's on the ground level and it went up from zero to one to two to three without stopping, most likely it's going to four. That tells us something because it went straight up. So that meant it took to somebody from the ground level up to the roof or 
there was nobody on the ground level and people on the roof wanted to come down. The idea is simple. Once a trend changes, then the momentum often grows. It's only when a stronger opposing trend emerges that a direction change changes again. So in between these relatively strong trends, there will be periods of consolidation, sideways trading, and price will often bounce off of support and resistance lines. In many ways, support and resistance or price levels are self-fulfilling prophecies. Many traders now use technical analysis and take them into consideration. However, price action trading offers the best of both worlds with both technical analysis and human input. Now, I do not ever, 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 ever use technical analysis. I don't use technical indicators in my trading. I use pure observation, trend lines, support and resistance and price patterns. That is it, okay? But you can trade any which way you want. But ultimately, it all comes down to what price is trying to tell you. So you don't take action with a trade until the market itself confirms your opinion. Being a little late in a trade is insurance that your opinion is correct. In other words, don't be an impatient trader. And how does the market confirm your opinion? not by its move. I don't know why you're, let's see, for some reason, okay. Not by its move, but by its action. And how do we see what that action is? It's called volume. Because just because your opinion says something should be going down here, and it seems like other traders agree and things are going down, that could be just a very, a false break a false move, okay? Volume will confirm your decision. So there are numerous disadvantages and advantages of using price action trading strategies. And ultimately it comes down to how disciplined you are as a trader. Now, the thing is, what I described to you, okay, is a nice filter system because you need to have your personal observation, your personal feel for the market. You have to have that personal feel for the drive to work. You're not gonna get that many trades. And you're gonna have to wait for that trade to offer itself with the right setup. So me, if I get 10 trades in a week, that's a lot for me. And I'm in the markets all day long. And usually when an asset is trending, you will get several trades on that asset because, you know, you set your stop loss, you take profit, it moves up to where it goes. You close your position a few minutes later, it offers you another opportunity, continue in that trend. But unfortunately, traders using price action trading are often caught out by significant shifts in the market. This often means prices do not return to their preferred trading levels. For those lacking discipline, they can end up chasing the price higher and higher. Meanwhile, for those who are able to remain focused on the technical situation, potential opportunities will merge. Now, I mentioned earlier, on Monday, this rumor swept the markets. It was in every financial newspaper you could imagine that Amazon was going to start accepting cryptocurrency, Bitcoin. Now, this was all reported that an insider said by the end of the year or maybe by the end of 2020, 2022, Amazon will start accepting Bitcoin as payment. And this rumor was fostered by the fact that the week before Amazon was running an, a, a, an open position for a lead cryptocurrency developer. Now, this spread all over the market and Bitcoin jumped from about 34 to about 40. Well, I can't tell you how many phone calls I got from people. Should I buy? Should I buy? It's going to go to 50, back to 60. I? Well, I don't really follow. I own a couple of Bitcoins, but I don't follow it as far as trading. But they were just chasing. Now, it turns out that rumor was mostly false. Amazon has not confirmed anything that they are going to be accepting Bitcoin. They are 
developing future uses of cryptocurrency and, and looking at developing their own digital assets, like every company is doing. You, know, you don't sit behind them forever. But there's been no anything from Amazon. So the markets are starting to return to normal. Okay. Well, there are people who want to jump in and trade all of that. There's others of us that would have never seen this watching price action and gotten an, an opportunity. Did I lose $3,600 or $4,000 the other day because I didn't make a trade? No. Didn't care. If it's not an asset that I'm looking at, those are the only assets I'm trading. Otherwise, sure, I might be buying Amazon stock. I might be buying Spotify. I might be buying Neo. But those are to put away for investments. I'm not trading them. My Bitcoin is put away for an investment. I've had them since they were seven hundred dollars. Okay, my little three whole Bitcoins. But the fact is, price action is a great way to trade, but you can't change the market, chase the markets with the price. So you have to be limit the assets you're trading and take the time to observe and wait for the actual potential trade to develop. So many of the strategies you mentioned above can be overcautious. Some people who are overcautious by some people when waiting for a definitive change in trend, there may be times when interday prices could spike above resistance or below support and then recover. This could be false flags and can be potentially costly in the long run. When looking at chart trends, not all traders will have the same opinion. Some will go long, others will go short. These decisions are based on their opinion of technical analysis as opposed to fundamentals. Whether you are ignoring the fundamentals is debatable because in theory, contract prices today should reflect all the information in the public domain. Basically, let the markets talk and listen to what they have to say. But no trader should ever ignore fundamental information, especially economic events, major you know, news events, because they can cause temporary imbalances to the market, which can cause you to get stopped out on a good trade or cause a good trade to go in the wrong direction. Because when the U.S. non farm payroll report is about to be released or inflation reports or somebody from the central bank system or, you know, Boris Johnson does something or Putin does something or, you know, a different economic indicator comes out, they will have some effect on the market, not your trade, but because they can add volatility to the markets that if you haven't factored in the possible volatility, and it's not the volatility, you should be aware of what events are happening when you have a trade open and when those events should happen so that you can be prepared to react or that you should take into consideration that that spike might cause more volatility. So maybe you need to set your stop loss a little bit farther away because you, you want your trade to happen and you want to stay in your trade. And you know that there's going to be volatility, not the market's going to reverse, not that the asset's going to fall, not the world's going to fall apart, but there'll be some volatility. So you should always be looking at fundamental analysis. And then remember low volume. If there isn't volume to confirm, then don't make your, your trade. Now, does price action trading demand discipline? The simple answer to this is yes, in the right hands. Price action strategy can highlight periods of consolidation, the emergence of new trends and phases of sideways trading. The key is to see what's in front of you as opposed to trying to manipulate the chart data into what you want to see. Understanding the personality, understanding what to expect and how to, re how to interpret it and how to react. Remember, there's a school bus on, on down the, the right way, there's the, the garbage truck in the other way. Your reaction in this case wants to be going straight. You need to understand which way to go without manipulating the data to make it go the way you want it to be. So the basic difference is that price action incorporates both technical analysis and human input. In other words, your decisions, your mind, your mapping of the asset and your understanding of personnel is more important than any of the technical. It's your experience and reading the charts, reading the price. And that is ultimately what is important. Now, while there is a degree of human input with regards to price action training, there also is a need to be disciplined 
even if you marginally miss out on several trades. The idea is blunt. When the turning point occurs, the momentum builds for a new trend and you will be there. So thank you very much for joining us. Have a great trading week and think about this. Understand it, but realize that you shouldn't be jumping from asset to asset. Get to know the assets you're trading, get to understand their personalities, get to be able to read what price is trying to tell you on the charts. Good night now.